Today, Shell's wonderful world of golf travels to the high country of central Oregon for a high-powered showdown between two of the game's biggest hitters. John Daly and Fred Couples have been two of the game's most popular players over the last decade, and between them have won three quarters of golf's Grand Slam. They'll let it fly in the rarefied air of Oregon's Cascade Mountains, next on Shell's wonderful world of golf. First begun in the early 1960s, this historic golf anthology series has spanned nearly 50 countries and seven continents and has featured head-to-head -head competition between the greatest golfers of their time. Welcome to the continuation of a golfing tradition. Welcome to Shell's wonderful world of golf. This week, we visit the state of Oregon and the Crosswater Golf Club. Our match today takes us to the northwest corner of the United States, a short flight from Portland, Seattle, or San Francisco, to the eastern flank of the Cascade Mountain Range, where Mount Bachelor stands sentinel some 9,000 feet above sea level. Even in summer, its snow-capped peak can be seen from Bend, Oregon's fifth largest city, which was named for a curious twist of the Deschutes River, which curls through the town. If you head south from Bend, you'll come upon a magnificent valley called Sun River, and the Northwest's premier vacation destination, Sun River Resort, and its extraordinary lodge. Sun River is an outdoorsman's paradise, complete with fresh air and blue skies. There are many modes of transportation for exploration at Sun River. Two wheels or four legs will get you to some of the prettiest vistas in Western America. The newest addition to this great golf resort is Crosswater, an aptly named magnificent Heathland style course with the Little Deschutes River running through it. Built on land that once was the setting for a couple of rough and tumble John Wayne films, there now sits 18 seemingly serene holes. But our players best be forewarned. To tame crosswater, they'll need their shooting irons and plenty of ammunition. Hello, everybody. I'm Jack Whitaker, and welcome to Shell's wonderful world of golf, being played today in the shadows of the Cascade Mountains in central Oregon. Our two players, Freddie Couples, undefeated in Shell's wonderful world of golf. He is 4-0, having beaten Raymond Floyd in the Dominican Republic, Greg Norman in Scotland, Tom Watson in Ireland, and Ernie Els in Canada. This will be his first appearance in the United States. His opponent is John Daly, the great Cinderella story of professional golf, winning the PGA Championship as an alternate. This course will be played at over 7,500 yards, so there's plenty of room for these players to stretch it out. Now with the two of them on the first tee, here's my colleague, Bob Rosberg. Rossi? Thanks, Jack. John, your first time on Shell's wonderful world of golf, you must feel pretty proud to put your name among all the great players that have played on this show. Oh, it's wonderful. It's um, something that's always going to be a uh, part of history, and that's what Shell's wonderful golf has done. And just watching the shows a um, long time ago, even when I was a young kid watching Nicholas play Palmer and you know, and all the all the other ones. It's just something that's going to be part of history for a long, long time, and I'm just honored to be a part of it. Well, we're glad to have you. Freddie, you're undefeated, <laughs> four for four. Uh, you're tackling a very formidable golf course, very long against a guy that can hit it quite a ways. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's going to be very exciting. Uh, crosswater is uh, very long. I would say it's pretty tough, and uh, for the people at home, if you don't see a lot of birdies, you know why. I think John, uh, with his length, and obviously my length too, but we need to be very good for our second shots. The greens are very fast, and the pins are pretty good, I'm sure, and I'm looking forward to playing them. Now, this match will be played under the uh, rules of the United States Golf Association. It will be 18 holes of stroke play, and if the players are tied at the end of 18 holes, it will be deemed a tie. To referee this match, a past president of the United States Golf Association, Grant Spaeth. Great to be here, and welcome you two, and play well. Now we need you to flip the coin, Grant. John, call it. Tails. Tails, if you get it right, you have a choice. You have a choice to play first or second. I love to play first. I don't do it much, so I, I love to play first. 
That might be a football game right there, huh? Rossi, let's take a look at this first hole. First hole is a 386 yard par four. Fairly easy starting hole, but you have to avoid the left hand bunker. It runs about 60 yards down the left hand side of the fairway. A good drive here will leave the players a short shot into a long green with the flag in the back today. A fairly easy placement. And Big John's going with the big club. Just catches the end of that bunker, Jack. Not, not the best place to be. Oh, I didn't think I could turn that baby over that quick. Two very distinctive swings. And they'll be using that driver a lot today. This course is long. Over 7,600 yards. The architects, Bob Cup and John Fote, opened in 1995, and already it is ranked 80th in the country by Golf Digest. The winner today will take home $100,000. The runner-up, $50,000. A tie will result in an even split of the money. Second shots. Pretty couples from 113 yards. Just a perfect sandwich. Easy. Easy. Hello. <laughs> I guess that distance was perfect for him, Jack. Now John Daly from out of the bunker, 68 yards from the hole. Very difficult shot. Up slope. Get up there. Very hard to blast the ball that far. Come out a little better. I'm sure he was close. He's down here in the left fringe. Wow. This could be it. Good shot, Freddie. Thank you. Good shot. You, that was kind of hard, Pam. That ball rolled a little bit or it hit way up there? 400 yards and he's on the fringe, Joey, LaCava. That's good. <laughs> uh, John Daly from 35 feet. Always tough to first putt of the day when you have a long putt to get the right speed. Well, that was slower than I thought. <laughs> well, he had the right speed, but not quite the right line. That was slow, slow. Now, John from six feet for his par. <laughs> Good two putt, John. Thanks, bro. Jack, that was a big putt to make. You certainly don't want to go two shots down on the first hole to somebody like Freddie Couples. Who has this now for the birdie after that marvelous shot? Good birdie, Freddie. Like I said on the first tee, that's why I went ahead and wanted to hit first. I haven't hit hey, first in a long time. That might be the only birdie I make. Well, with that birdie, Freddie Couples takes a one-shot lead after number one. Most people think of Oregon as a place of lush forests and plenty of rain. But there's another Oregon too. The high desert of the central region with its fascinating topography. And where 6,200 years ago, a volcano formed this dramatic lava butte where I'm standing now and created one of the most beautiful meadows in the whole Northwest. So beautiful that it became a gathering place. First, for the northern Paiute Indians, who lived a Stone Age-like existence here until the mid-19th century. Later, it became a gathering place for trappers, settlers, and explorers, including the pathfinder, John Fremont, who, along with his faithful scout, Kit Carson, were the first to map much of this area along the Deschutes River. With the advent of the Homesteading Act in 1843, American pioneers flocked to the area. They put down roots, and a thriving ranching industry emerged. But it was really World War II that sparked the beginning of Sun River as we know it today. 
The United States Army established Camp Abbott, a training compound where engineers could hone their bridge building skills for the invasion of Germany. Most of the bridges are gone now, but the heart of the camp remains. The old officers club is today called the Great Hall, a beautiful log structure used for corporate meetings that remains the focal point of good times in the great Northwest. The traders and trappers, the frontiersmen and buckaroos are all gone from central Oregon now, but they have been replaced by happy vacationers, hikers and bikers, skiers and golfers, all fascinated by this wonderland east of the Cascades. ESPN's presentation of Shell's wonderful world of golf is brought to you by Shell. Count on Shell. By Comfort Inns, it's more than a room, it's comfort. By the Dr. Pepper Company and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. And by Countrywide Home Loans, for nearly 30 years, we've helped people get homes of their dreams. Welcome back to the Crosswater Golf Club. We're at the second hole, a long par five. Freddie Couples has already driven in the fairway. Now John Daly. Oh, and he Very killed nice. that one, Jack. Nice. A little better. That is tremendous. Oh. That ball is out there about 350, Jack. And, you know, even at an altitude of 4,200 feet, uh, that, that's a long drive. Bodacious. Now, oh, Freddie. Freddie with a two iron from 258, 235 to carry the water. Look at this, Rossi. <laughs> the gallery was right about that. What a shot. Really hard to get a two iron up in the air like that. You know, I'm starting to like this two iron. <laughs> he should. John Daly from 231 with a five iron. <laughs> He guarded against the water a little too much, Jack, and that is in the bunker. Daly's left with a very difficult bunker shot, playing off the upslope, playing right toward the water, and the green was straight downhill. And what a beautiful touch. Jack, that's a sensational shot. Wow, I didn't think he would stop that fast, did you? Great shot, Johnny. Wow. This guy's got all the shots, Jack. Not only the driving length, but he's great around the greens also. And that was a very good example of the great touch he has. Now Freddie for Eagle. It's from about 40 feet. Very nice yeah, flag putt. A birdie for Freddie and a birdie for John. After two holes, Fred Couples two under, John Daly one under. The third hole here at the Crosswater Golf Club is a par three, 183 yards. Birdie Couples with a five iron. Nicely over that ridge, didn't he? <laughs> a daily with a seven iron, 183 <laughs> yards. He's going to have to get on this one. Fade a little. Stay. Come on, John. Nice shot, John. Oh, baby. Another good shot. No fade. <laughs> Both players two putted for pars, and at the end of three holes of play, Fred Couples retained his one shot lead. The fourth hole at the Crosswater Golf Club is a dog leg par four, 413 yards. 
Beautiful dogleg par four here. The players tend to lay up here. Driver might be a little too much. Freddy has a three wood. And he really yeah, looks loose Freddy. today. Thanks, Jack, uh, he's had a lot of trouble with his back, you know, but it, it, he looks like he's swinging the club beautifully. Mm. Very comfortable. We talked to Freddie about what he thought about John Daly's game. What John does really is, is a unique way of playing. He is uh, one way, and it's full bore, and if there's a hole he can drive and there's out of bounds left and right, he's going to try and drive it, and he'll hit driver until he does drive it. And I, I actually, I have no problem with that. The only thing I would like to see John do is be a little more patient when he does get near the lead because you don't need birdie every hole or, th or think you need to. And uh, I think you can pick on John's game, but the best thing really about it is that he plays one way and he lives and dies by it. And I, and I think as players, sometimes we look and say, boy, I wish I'd play that way. Because when you do play well, uh, you can basically tear the course apart. And that's what John can do. Well, we just watched John hit a two wood off the tee there and it went about 350. <laughs> now Freddie couples from 125 yards with a pitching wedge. Too easy. Well, watch it. Lucky they left the grass along there, Jack. That going right back in the hazard. Reminiscent of the, the Masters. Hmm. Now John Daly from 83 yards. Just a little lob wedge. Okay, isn't it? <laughs> That's in there about eight feet. Real good shot. Wow. Got him. Now Freddie's third shot. Ball really settled down in that rough. It's on the upslope, though. That's the only good thing about it. Green well above him. And that ball came out a lot softer than he thought it would. So Daly has an opportunity here. This is for birdie. Eight feet. Oh. <laughs> Putted it right through the break. Wow. Now Freddie for par. Just inside of the distance Daly had, about seven feet. Good yeah. par, Freddie. Good par for Fred Couples. And this is no gimme here. Mm -mm. Does not want to fall too behind this early. Uh, well done, John. Pars for both of them at the end of four holes of play. Freddie's still one shot ahead. The Sun River Resort, set among the stately pines of Oregon's high country, is a true year-round vacation destination. The lodge, as focal point, highlights the beauty and grandeur of the Northwest. Antique pine, timber floors, and a lovely rock fireplace welcome all to Sun River Resort. The new river lodges have elegant and spacious rooms next to the Sun River. The Merchant Trader Store offers casual shopping at the resort. And guests might try their hand on the putting course behind the lodge, all under the gaze of majestic Mount Bachelor. Welcome back to Crosswater, where everything about the clubhouse reflects this wonderful mountain setting. A welcoming fire greets visitors in the lobby. And in the dining room, there's always a sumptuous meal warming. It is Old West style with the best of modern amenities. Ready a couple birdies right off the bat. You said on the first tee that uh, there might not be many, but you got off to a great start. I did. Uh, very thrilled to birdie one, and then uh, we both hit good shots on two, and John hit a great bunker shot to make birdie there. So 201 and one on after four, I can't really complain. We got a little bit ahead of us till we get to number nine. 
Well, I was just going to say, John, uh, this golf course uh, kind of starts here on the front nine. Uh, they, they tease you with the first four holes, and then they, <laughs> they give you this five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, they're very tough holes, but, um, you know, it's nice that we're both playing solid, and that's, you know, that's what I wanted to do is just play solid. And uh, Freddie's going to be tough. He's playing good, and um, but uh, we got some holes that are very, very tough. Well, he always is tough. Oh, yeah, he's always <laughs> tough. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and see what this fifth hole looks like. Looks like a lot. <laughs> Rossi, let's take a look at it. Number five. Dramatic par four, 460 yard long, dog leg left. Trouble all the way down the left side. The bunker on the right comes into play on the tee shot. A good tee shot here will leave the players with a medium iron into a fairly flat green. As you can see, not bunkered at all. Daly, second shot from the middle of the fairway. 173 yards with an eight iron. I blocked it. Turnover, honey. Just on the front edge. He wanted to turn that eight iron over and had to to get it back to the hole. Now Freddie from 162 yards, and he's got a six iron. All over it. Why is that flying? Fine shot. And daily from 50 feet. Oh, how about that? What a great try. <laughs> Another example of his great touch around the greens. Here are some interesting onlookers. That looks like fun, Jack. Sure does. Now Freddie from 20 feet for his birdie to go three under. <laughs> so both players par the fifth hole. And Freddie retains a one-shot lead as we get to the sixth hole, a beautiful affair, which you have to drive over part of the Little Deschutes River. And this is a really long par five. I don't think this is reachable. 635, into the breeze. Thanks, John. Oh, another great long drive by Freddie. We've got two of the longest hitters in the game in this match. And we talked to John Daly about the mechanics of hitting it long. If my timing's on, I, I can swing as hard as I want and hit it straight. But when it's off, you know, you, you, I think um, most players would agree that if you swing about 85 to 90 percent is the most consistent shot you're going to get. Uh, when you try and get up there and just hit the ball as hard as you can and your timing's off, it could go anywhere. Fans love those long hitters, Jack. Don't they ever. Shot, Johnny. Thanks. Put on the toe. I know, not your best, but it's fairway, though. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, despite those drives, course, both Johnny. players laid up Johnny. on this long par five, and we'll pick up the action with the third shots. Not that might near ruling. You got a bad lie. Can you show them that lie there? How do you get a lie that good? Look at this grass. How far? 4 and 12 for 16 total. Oh, boy. Pitching with? Yep. 116, is there anything? There aren't any bad lies. Freddie joking about how beautiful the fairways are here at Crosswater. <laughs> 116 right to it. 116 yards with a pitching wedge. Lightly uphill. Get down. Oh. Mm -hmm. Got over the top of that a little, and when you do that, the ball goes a little too far. They sure feel good, Jack, but they don't end up very good. <laughs> Now John Daly from 106 yards with a sand wedge. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Now bite. 
Just didn't nice cut, but mm -hmm. I gotta work on that. <laughs> huh? Got to work on the cut shot. I gotta go see Jack Nicholas and maybe he can help me with a cut shot. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> now Freddie. And this is really a hard shot. A lot of ways to play this shot. He decided to bump it into the bank. First hop sort of killed it. Up there about 12 feet short of the hole. Another opportunity for John Daly. He's got about a 15 footer for a birdie. He makes it, he could pick up two shots on this hole. Room there, You're fine, Johnny. Par for John Daly. Now Freddie for par. Sixes on par fives don't set very well with these fellas. Not very well indeed. And at the end of six holes of play, we're all even. Crosswater co-creator John Fote has also brought the picturesque Meadows course to life. The long scenic track winds its way through grassy meadows and pine stands with many of the holes bordering the Sun River. The redesign has added more directional bunkers and challenging greens to this layout, offering ample challenges to players who enjoy Fote's tribute to the great courses of yesteryear. A combination of grace, drama, and beauty. Even though we're in the high desert, you can still find picture postcard mountain scenery. This is Elk Lake, a snow-fed lake which sits at the base of Mount Bachelor and offers a beautiful setting for an afternoon sail. Now we're back at the Crosswater Golf Club in the seventh hole. Long par three, 211 yards, but playing a little downwind today. Difficult hole placement all the way in the back center of the green. John Daly with a seven iron. Hard to believe, seven iron, 211. On. Kick right. Kick right, ball. Come on down. Well, he almost had it. Whoa. Didn't that have that to much. carry much farther to be perfect. <laughs> yep. I should try to slide the six, but, you know, catch it flush and fly the world, you're in trouble. <clears throat> it's only about 60 feet. Now couples with a five iron. Go. They're keeping tabs on each other. <clears throat> Both players two putted for par, and at the end of seven holes of play, we're still all tied up. And that brings us to the beautiful eighth hole. Par four, 427 yards. Players drive over a marsh to a fairly narrow landing area. Bunkered on the right. Good drive will leave the players a medium iron over the water into a very well bunkered green and a quite shallow green at that. Beautiful hole. John Daly now with a two wood. Oh, get up. Sit down. Get up, sit down, Jack. It did both. It's all right. <laughs> now, Freddie, with that three wood, he hits so far. I think he hits this club almost as far as this driver, Jack. Mm. Good one, Freddie. Thanks, John. Yeah. What am I thinking about with a two-iron? Well, for some reason, I thought... 
Well, I mean, I'm thinking hitting two iron, and I'm going, if I hit this just a little fat, it's not getting over it. No, uh, you know, now I know. Okay. I'm with the golf course designer, Bob Cup, and what a beautiful place you've designed here. Uh, thank you very much, Jack. This was an exceptional opportunity, and it's been a great pleasure. Well, it's a beautiful place, and you've done a great job in using all the natural beauty here. Well, we were given great natural beauty, and we wanted to do everything we could to preserve every square inch of it. And uh, we had a wonderful crew here when we were working on this project. With uh, I had Billy Fuller working on turf, and John Fote, and Jimmy Griffin in construction. It was just uh, it was a great crew. That was a great time for us. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Let's get back to the action, Rossi. Daly from 159 yards with an eight iron. Be right, honey. Just be right. Oh, almost. Right okay. over the flag, but uh, in the frame. Just a little long. Huh? Yeah. Man, I thought that was going to be good, 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 good. Ready from 156 with a seven iron. Easy, Joe. Easy. It's a seven, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shot, Freddy. Yep. He had the right club. I'll Seven. say. I can't. You're scaring me with these nine irons. <laughs> <laughs> now, Daly. Chip from the fringe. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yes. yes. <laughs> and that's what the people came out to see. Shot, Tony. Thanks, Joey. <clears throat> Thanks. I didn't think that one was going to miss, huh? Good one there, man. Do that the rest of the day. Yeah. Couples now from 10 feet to try and top that birdie. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Stayed online, huh? <laughs> Boy, you're, I'd have never made it if I hadn't seen your chip. <laughs> Good putt, Bob. Good chip. <laughs> Thanks. And so after eight holes of play, we're still all tied up. Two birdies. Internationally renowned course architect Robert Trent Jones Jr. has left his mark in Oregon with the stunning and challenging Woodlands course. Dense forests of ponderosa and large pole pine are abundant, while numerous bunkers and tricky greens ensure that a premium is placed on shot accuracy. The beautiful central Oregon setting makes the woodlands one of the Northwest's finest championship courses. The Sun River Marina is the starting point for canoe or kayak trips for the whole family. The scenic Deschutes River provides an ideal location to while away a few relaxing hours. We're back at the Crosswater Golf Club at the foot of Mount Bachelor, and here's Rossi with the two players. John, with Freddie in there pretty close, you chipped it right in, put the heat back on him. Well, I had a feeling he was going to make that putt. Um, we both have been kind of edging the holes these first few holes, and. Uh, so it was nice. I, I thought I had a couple putts, and this game's crazy. Uh, the chip felt good, and kind of right when I hit it, saw it rolling, I knew it was going in, and I kind of knew Freddie would make his. <laughs> Freddie, a couple yeah. under par through eight, uh, both of you. That's really great playing. Uh, this, this course is not that easy. No, it really isn't. Uh, you know, we've hit the ball in the fairway. Uh, the last hole, I think, uh, was probably the toughest hole so far, and we both buried it, which is a nice uh, gesture on our part to come out here <laughs> and play, because I'm sure we're going to have a few mistakes. But like John said, uh, you know, I, I wasn't expecting uh, him to chip it down there too far away, but when it went in, I knew I had a shot of tying, and that's where we're at, two under, two under. We got a nice, easy hole to play here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's go ahead. <laughs> well, let's take a look at this nice, easy hole. Now, the Little Deschutes River going up the right of this long par four. No bunkers on this hole. Very narrow tee shot, however, and the green is huge, over 10,000 square feet with the flag today all the way in the back. Both players have already hit their tee shots and missed the fairway. 
Couples from 180 yards with a seven iron out of the light rough. First fairway, Freddie's missed. Sit down. Yeah, get on it. Nice work, Freddie. Sit down. That's long. Left, so it's back in the shwale. Now John Daly from 152 yards with a nine iron, expecting it to fly. Good looking shot, John. Go! Go! Beautiful golf shot in there. Sure. One more bounce and it's oh, gonna be very good. Uh -huh. Now Freddie putting up the slope. Young golf fans enjoying this match as this gallery is, is completely enjoying it, aren't they? It's been a good match. Now John Daly from 20 feet. Wow. Man. No birdie for John, but par for both of them. And at the end of nine holes, they're all tied up at two under. Freddie with three birdies and a bogey. John Daly with two birdies. And this enthusiastic gallery now makes its way across the bridge over the Little Deschutes River. And we'll be doing the same thing and join them for the back nine in just a moment. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf at Crosswater in Oregon, and we've seen some great shot making in that front nine. Tremendous golf, Jack. They really surprised me that, the, that they'd shoot under par. It's a, it's a tough day to play, a little breeze, and it's, it's pretty cold, unseasonably cold, but uh, boy, that, that was some nine holes both of them played. How about this back nine? Well, the wind is getting up a little. The back nine's equally as hard. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I kind of thought the last uh, five holes of the front nine were the five toughest holes in the golf course, but they didn't uh, mm -hmm. prove to be that. Well, we'll see. They've already hit their tee shots here at 10. Let's join the action down the fairway. Now John Daly with a shot of 155 yards after a two iron off the tee at this dogleg par four. And that is an all out pitching wedge there. Get up. I thought it would, I think it would jump off that far right, but it's back there, been high in there. Couples hit a three wood off the tee and has 151 yards. He's going to play a little nine iron. You won't see this swing quite as hard as that of Daly's. Looks like he didn't like it, Jack. Yeah. I don't know why. He got a pretty good break. I think he thought it was going to be long left. Now daily for birdie. This is from 20 feet coming straight up the hill. Hit it, John. Hit it, man. Wow, that was slow. All right, the two designers of this golf course. On the right there is John Fote. John was a great player, won the amateur championship, played some on the tour. You think they're discussing how to make this course a little harder, Jack? I think so. The way these two players are handling it today. This is from 15 feet for a birdie for Freddie. Oh my, how did that stay out? Thanks. Two pars for the players at the 10th hole and our match remains all even. And we move now over to the 11th hole, a par four, 480 yards. John Daly with a two wood. Generous landing area. John drives a lot with his two wood. Oh, no. well, that's a big hook. It's no out of bounds, huh? Huh? Now, Freddie. Freddie with his driver. Beautiful. 
Beautiful shoulder yeah. turn, huh? Oh, he's hit the ball well today. Great round of golf so far. There's an awful lot of history in this part of Oregon. We've mentioned some of it already. And here, just adjacent to the 11th fairway, is the Pioneer Cemetery. This is a stark reminder of the early days of settlement in the Oregon high country. And it's a reminder of what harsh times they were here 150 years ago. And perhaps preserved for our players to contemplate en route to the green. As John Daly walks over to where he put his drive. I think Fred Couples will play first. He drove out to the right. He has 197 yards into this long par four, and he's got a five iron. Cut, 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 cut. Ah, come, come on, on. cut. Score, baby. All right, John. Good solid shot. Now John Daly from 197 yards also has a marginal lie, has to get it up in the air over those trees to throw it to the green. He has a seven iron. Well, that thing came out shooting left. It hit pretty soft, I think. God, that's really not too bad. Mm -hmm. Jack, that's a pretty good break. Okay, good a little pit shot here. Now Daly, off an uphill lie, makes this shot a whole lot easier. Oh, look at this. That is talent right there. He took a full swing at that ball, Jack, and only hit it about 40 yards. Holy smokes. What a touch he has. Now couples from 35 feet for a birdie to take the lead. I can't. I can't. I'm with you. I can't hit him. Now Daly, eight feet for the par. Bounced. Wow. JD. I still don't think it would have gone in. Either. And so a bogey for John Daly, his first of the match. And Fred Couples once again takes the lead after 11 holes. And now, another winning never gets old golf tale, brought to you by Comfort Inns and Suites. I know this comes to a great shock to you. John Daly's gonna give you a tip on short game. But without it, we can't win golf tournaments. What I'm gonna show you today is a flop shot, right over a bunker to a very tight pin. The great thing about it is just like a bunker shot. All you do is you play it off your left pinky toe, you open the club face, take the club outside, and you just hit under it. That's a wrap. <laughs> this winning never gets old golf tip has been brought to you by Comfort Inns and Suites. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf from the Crosswater Golf Club in Sun River, Oregon. We're at the 12th hole. Look at you. Are those kind of shoes off? You're a better dresser than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not saying a lot. <laughs> you got in here. You got any money in there? <laughs> uh -huh. You do? Oh, man, times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at one of the longest holes in golf. 687 yards, water all the way down the left. That bunker on the right does not come into play from this back tee. The excuse for a hole being 687 might be the elevation of 4,200 feet, but this would be a long par five on top of Mount Everest. It's the longest one I ever saw, Rossi, and if you want to compare it with a couple of other famous par fives, how about the 13th at Augusta's 485? This is almost 200 yards longer, and Pebble Beach is 18th at 543. Another 140 yards more here. Freddie Couples. 
Another solid drive right up the right hand side. Thank you. Thank you. Huge landing area here. And that ball jumped in the water. Oh. Did it go in the water, Bob? I think it did. And that was a big mistake, Jack. Huge landing area to the right, and even John Daly couldn't get home here in two. He dropped, hit it in the rough, and now he has 156 yards for his fourth shot. And that was a nine iron. It's just the left of the hole. Should be fine. That's a great shot. Mm -hmm. Stay there, ball. It's not really the putt I wanted, but. Now Freddie Couples, after hitting a solid drive and a solid three wood, still has 114 yards mm -hmm. to the hole mm -hmm. with a sand wedge. No, 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 no. Hey, Freddie. Really butchered that other par five. Both players two putted. John Daly taking his second consecutive bogey and Freddie a marvelous par. And Fred Couples now with a two shot lead as we move to the par three, 13th hole. Shortest par three on the golf course at 166 yards. Flag right over the bunker today. Freddie with a seven iron. nice, isn't it? Uh, that's a pull. That's not going to be a very easy pitch. It's probably the worst shot Freddie's hit today. Now John Daly with a nine iron. I think it was just, it was going to be a real big one, you know. I think it, we should have slid, slid an eight iron, though. And I didn't hit it. Tough pitch here. Green above him. Marginal lie. Run. Go, 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 go. Not bad, not I good, Jack. Oh, it was solid. Muff it. Daily chipping this ball. Go. Mm. Oh, if I hit it, I make it, Bob. He was trying, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he really needs to make something happen after those two bogeys. Now, Freddie from eight feet, and this is a big putt to maintain a two shot lead. Never a Kill. doubt. Good putt, Freddie. Thanks, John. Kill. Knock it in. And now Daly with one he has to make. Three feet. Yes, both players at par. And so after 13 holes of play, Freddie still enjoys a two-stroke lead. The Deschutes River, which feeds into the mighty Columbia, was named in the 1800s by French fur trappers. The translation means River of the Rapids. It's no wonder that adventuring raptors enjoy shooting these class four rapids at a particularly challenging bend in the river called Big Eddy. Welcome back to Sun River, Oregon, where every night at dusk, a good old-fashioned Western-style stampede takes place. Like clockwork, the stables release their herd to feed in the meadows surrounding the lodge. 
And we're now at the 14th tee at the Crosswater Golf Club. Long par four, 468, but very wide fairway. Both players will use drivers. Thanks, what John. tempo? Mm -hmm. Another fairway for Freddie. He only missed one. Now Daly. Got a baby. Nice one. Thanks. <clears throat> See you guys. Sure. And that one is long, Jack, right there. You know, that ball's about 330, and they're not getting a lot of roll out here. No, they're not. Freddie's a big cheerleader for John, isn't he? <laughs> Loves to see him play well. I think that's great. I do, too. Couples now from 158 yards with an 8-iron. Daily after that tremendous drive, 136 yards with a pitching wedge. Playing a little knockdown shot. Oh, and that's beautifully done there. Shot, Johnny. <clears throat> that's tight, bud, huh? Wow. That's a little better. A little better huh? indeed. Let's take another look, Bob. In slow motion, you'll notice that even playing a little punch shot, the club is past parallel on the backswing, but he really hangs on with that left hand. Knocks the ball down in there, but still has a lot of spin on it. Beautifully done. Now couples from 25 feet. Great part, Fred. Thanks. <laughs> so, great part. That's like Mark. a. Thanks. Knock it in. It's like a one of those let cords. That's like stealing, is what it is. <laughs> wow. Now this is a must make here. Is too good, Freddie. Two birdies here, and after 14 holes, Fred Couples three under, John Daly one under, and the game is on for the trophy of Shell's wonderful world of golf. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf in the high desert of Oregon, just east of the Cascade Mountains, where Mount Bachelor looks down very kindly on the Crosswater Golf Club. Well, this is some golf course. You talk about beauty and a, and a great golf course. This is it. 15th hole, 414 yards. One of the easier par fours on the golf course. And couples on the tee with a three wood. That's uh, early. Thank you. Gallery getting very enthusiastic as this match winds down. Good, John. Hey, sir, you're a little early on those. If you don't mind us. And that ball is in the hazard way to the right. I really believe that the comment from the gallery broke John's concentration. He took a couple of extra waggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one thing to be enthusiastic and another to break a man's concentration. That's too bad. 
Bob, let's take a look at it again and listen. All right. John usually plays very quickly. Good, John. You can see him take a couple extra waggles. Hey, sir, you're a little early. And other players might have stepped away and, and regrouped, but that isn't daily style. It really broke his concentration. And this one really hurt. I'm going to go in, okay? I have to. You know? No. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's right there. There's our referee, right Grant right Spath. See it? Right here. <clears throat> John looks like he's going to go in and hit it. What do we got? 92 in front. He has some shot here. He's got to grip the club way down. Well, we saw it pop up in the air, but it's still in the hazard. Should we thank that spectator or what? Yeah. We don't even know if it's, I can't hit this. Yeah. I don't even know if it's my ball, so. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Yeah. If it were not his ball, Jack, he would, it would have been no penalty for hitting the wrong ball out of a hazard. And now while John is getting dressed again, Couples is out on the fairway, 88 yards from the hole with a lob wedge. Oh, yeah. oh my. Oh. That's thrusting the dagger in. Well, John has taken a drop. He's playing his fourth shot from 109 yards. No bargain with that lie either. Now he's left himself some kind of tough shot. Fifth shot. Very heavy. Now Daly with a really hard shot. He's going from bad to worse here, Jack. Oh, that's playing a six shot. Almost impossible to get this ball close. It's about as well as he could have played it. Now from 35 feet for a triple bogey seven. Oh, John. <laughs> nice going, John. Thanks. It's a seven, huh? It's all right. We're the last three. Go out with your head high, though. Now, couples for another birdie. Go on, Freddie. Takes a pretty yeah. commanding lead now, Jack. A four-shot swing here at the 15th hole after that unfortunate incident. And Fred Couples now leads by six. Welcome back to Shell's wonderful world of golf from the Crosswater Golf Club at the Sun River Resort in Oregon. Beautiful afternoon. Let's go to Rossi with the players. John, uh, kind of unfortunate. Uh, I didn't know there was a hazard over there. I'm sure you didn't either. No, I didn't know there was one on the tee box either uh, <laughs> before I hit. Uh, uh, no, yeah. I didn't know it was a hazard. It's just uh, made a bad swing, and I, the ball was sitting up actually in it, and I thought if I could just get under it and get it out, I still thought I might be able to make yeah. bogey at worst. But I had to try because Freddie had already had me up by two or three. So, okay. you know, what do you do? That's right. <laughs> Freddie, uh, that putt you made at the hole before kind of forced John's hand. Uh, it, was, it looked like he was going to get within one, and then you hold a 20-footer. You know, even the little par three where I pulled it left and made a nice yeah. eight or nine footer. Uh, and then, uh, as you said, making a 30 footer when John's in there three feet was not much fun to swallow. But uh, for me, it was good and obviously a bad hole for John there. And 
uh, came back, making a 30-footer. So, you know, we still have a few holes to go. And let's take a look at the 16th, another beauty. Great par five. Marshland cuts across the fairway at about the 300-yard mark. Very narrow in that area. Players have a tough time getting home here because of that marshland. Second shot at left-hand bunker and the right-hand bunkers come into play. Makes it very difficult if you hit it in one of those. The green slopes away from the players, drops off severely in the back. Both players have hit their tee shots, and here's John taking a rip at it. He's got about 315 or 320. Oh. And that one is hit. <laughs> Go. Go! Maybe a little anger in that one, Jack, huh? I think so. I can't hit it any better than that. Oh, John, you almost hit it on from way back there. He chipped to here and has this putt now for birdie. No, it'd be a par for John Daly and a par for Freddie Couples at the 16th hole. Here at the 17th. And this is some par three here, 258 yards from the back tee. And they didn't do the players any favor with the hole location here. It is right behind the right-hand bunker. Ready couples with a two iron. Oh, great swing, Freddie. And another solid long iron for Fred at this very difficult par three. Well, Fred has a long history of great long iron shots on Shell's wonderful world of golf. It all began down in the Dominican Republic at the teeth of the dog. This was at the ninth hole in a match against Raymond Floyd. And this lovely shot set up an eagle and set him on his way to victory. Then it was in the wind in Skibo Castle in Scotland in a match against Greg Norman. Another two iron to within about eight feet to nail down his victory. Then in Ireland, at Mount Juliet, this wood shot from the rough. Put him in a commanding position against Tom Watson. And then in Whistler, Canada, at the Nicholas North course, on the 17th hole in a match against Ernie Els, this lovely shot. And that nailed down his fourth victory on Shell's wonderful world of golf. And now he marches on toward his fifth win. For one more week, I can have a break. That's his wife, Thais. <laughs> what do you mean? After last week? After another successful day on the golf course. Next week, Shell's wonderful world of golf travels to suburban Columbus, Ohio and the Longaberger Golf Club for a match between two of the LPGA's brightest stars, Dottie Pepper and Kari Webb. That's next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. Then in two weeks, we'll be in Princeton, New Jersey at the TPC Yasna Palana for a match between two of the senior PGA Tour's superstars, Tom Watson and Hale Irwin. That's Tuesday, October 26th at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN's presentation of Shell's Wonderful World of Golf has been brought to you by Comfort Inns. It's more than a room, it's comfort. By Countrywide Home Loans. For nearly 30 years, we've helped people get homes of their dreams. By the Dr. Pepper Company and your local Dr. Pepper butler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. And by Shell, count on Shell. We're at the 18th hole of the Crosswater Golf Club. Par four, 456 yards. Both players have hit their drives. Wonderful closing hole. John Daly drove in the water and had to drop. He has an eight iron for his third shot. Oh. 
And now Freddie Couples after missing only his second fairway of the day playing a seven iron out of the right hand fairway bunker. He sure knows how to hit those hangers, that was doesn't he? <laughs> smashed. He's been a little fortunate, but he's played beautifully. Uh -huh. oh. Now Daly, long 60-footer. Had a lot of these today. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Go, baby. Come on, baby. What a way to finish. Come on. Ah. Except for one hole, John played beautiful. Now couples very quick chip. Go in. Go in. <laughs> Take that flag, Wedge. What a round of golf, Jack. 68 is some score. Here at Crosswater. Thanks, John. Joey, finally. Yeah. Thanks. Good to see you. Joey? Two caddies, Bob. Joey, thanks. Okay. Good plan. They enjoyed playing with each other. Final scorecard. The front nine was a real match. Both of them shooting two under par for 34 going out. The back nine started out a little differently. And, of course, the whole match changed at the 15th hole when John Daly, disturbed somewhat on his tee shot, took a tragic and horrendous triple bogey seven. And that was pretty much the match. Fred Couples finishes with a 68, a new course record. John Daly at 76. It has been a beautiful afternoon here in the high desert of Oregon. And if you're looking for a stunning place to play a great golf course, this is your deal. Now here's Bob Rosberg with the two players. Thank you, Jack. John, I know you'd like to have won this match, but we certainly appreciated your playing on Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, and I imagine uh, you enjoyed it also. I really did, uh, Rossi. It, it was an honor to be here. Um, it's a part of history, like I said last night, and um, it would have been nice to have made it a little closer, but, uh, you know, a couple bad swings here and there, it, just does, it, it, it doesn't help you too much. But uh, Freddie played awesome golf, as he usually does, and... Um, what a great site we had at Sun River. Um, we need to go back and talk to Commissioner Fincham and see if we can't get a tour event somewhere up here sometime because people here deserve it. They really deserve it. John, we'd like to present you this memento from Shell. Oh, thank you. Freddie, as John said, you played a tremendous round of golf. Uh, another course record, five in a row on Shell. Uh, you, you, this is a great spot for you. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I ought to remember what I do in these shells matches and take it out in the tour and, and see if I can do a little bit better. Um, I must say that of all the times I've played, every time I drive the ball very well. And uh, when I do well in tournaments, that's what happens also. And today was no exception. I, I hit it in the bunker here, but I think every hole I was in the fairway. And uh, Crosswater is a great course if you're in the fairway. And if you're not, you're going to struggle. And I think that's what happened the last couple holes with John. But as far as me, and Shells, uh, I'm 5-0, and, oh and I couldn't be tickled pink. Uh, I, I did enjoy the chance of playing with John. I love to watch him play. As we all know, he hits it a mile, but he's got great touch, and uh, I'm glad I beat him. Well, Freddie, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're always tough, but it was a great round of golf today. Thanks. Now I'd like to introduce Tom Lurson, the managing director of Sun River, and thank him for his great hospitality for the week. Thank you, we sure appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, sir. Thanks, Lurson. John, thank you very much. And now to make the presentation, Mr. Hiram DeFries, the general manager for Pacific North Region of Shell. Thank you very much, Bob. I'd like to thank both of these golfers, great golfers, John Daly, Freddie Couples, for appearing in the fine tradition of Shell's wonderful world of golf. And Freddie, to you, championship trophy again, trophy number five, on behalf of the shareholders, employees, the wholesalers, retailers, and customers of Shell Oil Company, I award this trophy to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you very much. 
very much. John, thanks. Well, I know we all enjoyed the day. Now let's go back to Jack Whitaker. Thank you, Rossi. So Freddie is now 5-0 and oh on Shell's wonderful world of golf, and that's a record that's going to be hard to beat. We thank both players for showing us some great shot making today here in the high desert of central Oregon. It has been a perfect venue for Shell's wonderful world of golf, which is always striving to put the best players in the world on the world's best courses. And with golf expanding as it is today, we're finding these little gems like cross water, where golf thrives in this lovely meadow where a river runs through it. We hope you enjoyed it. For Bob Rosberg, this is Jack Whitaker. See you next time on Shell's Wonderful World of Golf.